so I'd, I'd like to discuss three fronts, the social front, the economic front, and the political front, in order to talk about the successes and failures uh, and what the Chavista policies have meant for the, for the people. Um, beginning with the social front, uh, I think that, uh, like in the case of the other two fronts, that uh, there are winners and losers in the policies that Ch the Chavez government has pursued, and that those winners, those, the losers, are not necessarily elite groups. Um, uh, the winners might be the popular sectors, and the losers might be um, a big chunk of the population taking in the middle class, the lower middle class, and some of the, some of the poor people of Venezuela. So it's more complex than just saying uh, this is a zero-sum game which benefits the poor and hurts the interests of the uh, privileged sectors of the population. Um, just to give you one example of um, an area which I know well because I've participated in directly, and that is um, the scholarship program which provides incentives to university professors who undertake research. That program is known as the PPI, and it was established in the year 1990. Um, and uh, during the 1990s, the program was very much criticized for being elitist, for favoring uh, those professors who published not any publication, but publications um, abroad. Uh, it was almost uh, irrelevant if a university professor uh, published um, in journals that different universities in Venezuela published, because the criteria was publications in an index known as the Sign Citation Index, which are mostly English journals, uh, more than 50% English journals, and just one or two Venezuelan journals. So that uh, during the 1990s, and so Chavez took office, uh, the professors who published locally were not really uh, privileged, or were not given any um, incentives uh, or rewards for their research. That changed under Chavez. And in the year 2000, 2001, uh, there was a change of the um, criteria that, that's being used in order to evaluate the productivity of university professors. So now the number of professors who are receiving these benefits has skyrocketed. Uh, and there's a debate going on. I was privileged to participate in some of that um, as a member of the, of the national directorate of the, of the PPI program. And uh, it's evident that a lot of professors who publish a lot, who publish in English, and you know, claim to be publishing in top journals abroad, they're complaining uh, because they're not getting um, the recognition that they got before. They're not getting, you know, from a financial viewpoint, they're not getting as much money. There are more professors who are getting paid in this program. Um, and as a result, the top-notch professors uh, who publish, you know, in the supposedly most prestigious journals uh, internationally are getting less. And so they're saying that the program has lost its prestige. But as a result, um, the increase in the number of professors who are benefiting and are undertaking privilege, uh, undertaking research, and are motivated uh, to do this research uh, has skyrocketed. Uh, in some areas, a threefold increase in the number of professors who are in this program. So that, in essence, you can say that quantity has been emphasized over quality. And I think that this same principle can be applied to the educational programs, known as the missions. Uh, the mission program uh, involves uh, poor people, schools, makeshift, at first makeshift uh, programs in the barrios, uh, literacy, high school education, university education, and specifically at the high school and university level. The criticism of the, pro of the mission program is that the education does not compare with the established education of the uh, state, of, of, of the universities, of the established universities, and the established high schools throughout the country. Because the professors, for instance, in the high school programs, do not have a college degree. 
they have some college education, but they don't have degree. They don't have a university degree. And the education is based on video cassettes, a program that was developed in Cuba. And Cuba has played a very influential role in uh, establishing this program. A lot of the cassettes come from Cuba, uh, and the program itself, the, 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 the mission program, uh, uh, really uh, is based on the Cuban model. At the university level, the same situation. Uh, the university mission, known as the Mission uh, Sucre, uh, uh, also uh, you can say that the professors uh, in those programs don't do research, um, and uh, that the quality, uh, at least uh, up until now, has not been comparable to the quality of an established university. And so the students in the established universities are saying, you know, we're not against the poor people studying, and we're not against them getting a degree. It just shouldn't be a university degree. It should be something else. It should be like a junior college degree in, in, Spanish, in Venezuela, it's called TSU. So the degree shouldn't be a university degree. It shouldn't be a, a BA degree. It should be a junior college degree, that kind of thing. Um, but the fact of the matter is that this program has been extremely successful in, in, um, in attracting large, hundreds of thousands of poor people, adults, um, so that uh, uh, the program has been successful. And if the degree that was offered to these students at the university level in the barrios if it was just a junior college degree, it would not be successful in attracting so many people. Because in Venezuela, a junior college degree isn't worth much on the job market. So the prospect of having a university degree and being able to you know, compete in the job market is what is attracting these poor people, uh, young and old. Uh, so that there is a trade-off. And the trade-off uh, you know, hurts the interests of the university population, which you can't call a, an elitist population, but it, again, is another example of quantity over quality.